Welcome to I-24 News, I'm Asher Westrop Evans and here are the top stories making news at this hour. In breaking developments, Israeli Patriot missiles shot down a Syrian fighter jet which penetrated into Israeli territory. The jet flew two kilometres inside Israeli territory before it was taken down. The IDF says the plane was being monitored as it approached the border. It is unclear at this time if the plane intentionally penetrated into Israel or the move was accidental spillover from operations inside Syria. The Israeli military said it had noticed increased Syrian air force activity in the area since the morning. Syrian state media contradicts the IDF's description of the events, stating that the plane was shot down inside Syrian territory and calling the move an Israeli aggression. The IDF stressed that it will continue to enforce the 1974 Separation of Forces Agreement, which requires Syria to abide by a demilitarized zone between the two countries. And the brewing Twitter war between Washington and Tehran continues, a day after US President Donald Trump warned Iran never, ever to threaten the United States or face consequences which only few throughout history have witnessed, all of which was said in capital letters. Iran's Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif tweeted this morning saying, colour us unimpressed, also in capital letters. Zarif added that the Persians have been around for a millennia and have seen the fall of other empires. Tensions between the two countries have sharply increased following the decision by the US President Donald Trump last May to step out of the Iran nuclear deal signed three years ago. On to Greece, where at least 49 people have been killed and more than 100 injured as a wildfire swept through a small resort town. Victims trapped by flames as they attempted to flee the blaze in the village of Mati, east of Athens, is said to have been triggered by the massive heat wave sweeping the country. Neighbouring countries, including Israel, reached out to Greece, offering their assistance. But the Greek authorities say there is no need for help as they have taken control of the blaze. The Greek Prime Minister spoke earlier, stressing national unity. We must at this moment all be in a constant state of alert. We must be unified and make the effort to face an exceptionally difficult situation for Attica and the country. And Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan used some of the strongest rhetoric yet towards Israel as he addressed the nation's state bill, adopted by Israeli parliament just last week. Hitler's spirit resurrected in Israel, said the Turkish president, adding that Hitler's spirit is revived among part of the Israeli government. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was quick to react, saying that Erdogan is slaughtering Syrians and Kurds and is imprisoning thousands of his fellow citizens. And if this so-called Democrat attacks the bill, it is probably the greatest compliment. Netanyahu added that under Erdogan, Turkey is becoming a dark dictatorship, while Israel adheres to equal rights for all its citizens. And Israeli Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman has decided to partially open the Kerem Shalom crossing from Israel into Gaza. The crossing was closed last week in an effort to put pressure on Hamas to stop the incidents along the Israeli-Gaza border fence, in particular the incendiary kites which, and balloons which Israel refers to as kite terrorism. And on this issue, the IDF fired warning shots just this morning towards Palestinians inside Gaza as they were preparing to launch an incendiary kite into Israel. Israel is considering a new plan to deport Eritrean asylum seekers back to their country of origin. Israel has refrained from deportations in the past as Eritrea was considered a dangerous country, in large part due to its policy of compulsory military service, which can last for decades. Sources in Israel's interior ministry are saying that due to recent changes in the region, including the meeting between the leaders of Eritrea and Ethiopia, which ended 25 years of war between the two East African nations, the danger to the asylum seekers to returning to their own country decreases, perhaps facilitating the process of sending them back. And thank you very much for watching I-24 News. To stay up to date with all the latest news and headlines, continue to watch or follow us online at i24news.tv or on Twitter or Facebook. Thank you for watching.